Hey everybody! And a warm welcome to a new story. Today's Reddit story is called Two Malicious Compliances Equals One Pro Revenge from the Reddit Pro Revenge subreddit. I hope you like it and will enjoy the time. If you like my content and this kind of videos, please leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. As always this story is told from the original writer's point of view. The link is down below in the description. Enjoy it. This is being posted under my alt, as some of my people know my main Reddit username. And I never was in it for the karma. Several years ago, Bob, my boss, did a job for BGGA Construction, and got screwed. It wasn't a huge amount of money, a couple of thousand dollars, but screw is screwed. Basically, he accepted BGGA's word on something that they denied later. Bob consulted his lawyer, and was told that since the issue was not in writing, that any legal action was likely to fail, and even if he won, that the legal costs would exceed any settlement. And BGGA basically said, my lawyer can beat up your lawyer. Bob then asked what every lawyer likes to hear, what should I have done differently? Fast forward to 2017. BGGA is soliciting bids for a new restaurant called Fancy A. Bob submits a bid for supplying and installing door hardware, things like doorknobs, emergency exit bars, door closes that pull the doors shut, dot and three automatic door operators ADOs. An ADO is something you have seen before, it has a metal plate with a wheelchair logo mounted on the wall, when you press it, a motor opens the door. It's designed to allow people with limited mobility to pass through a doorway. Bob wins the bid, and calls a meeting. He is handling this job personally. All communication with BGGA is to go through Bob, and only Bob. If someone from BGGA calls and says, nice weather, isn't it, we are to reply, I wouldn't know anything about that, let me transfer you to Bob's line. Under no circumstances is anyone from BGGA to be given Bob's cell number. And the after hours on call texts are only to return the call and say that Bob will be in touch in the morning. Violation of any of this will be grounds for immediate dismissal for cause, is this perfectly clear? A few weeks go by, and we get a call from, GC, who not only is running the job for BGGA, but is BGGA's son. He's entitled shitball of a tyrant, with anger issues and a vocabulary that relies heavily on profanity. I'm calling him, GC, because that's his job title, general contractor. For those who don't know, a GC is responsible for ensuring that everything gets done on a construction site in the correct order. For example, if you are building a bathroom, first you put up the wall studs, then the electrical is run and the plumbing supply lines are roughed in, next the drywall goes up, then the tile, and the baseboards. The walls, ceiling, and trim get painted, then the cabinets, light fixtures and switches are installed. Lastly the plumbing fixtures go in. So you can see, a GC has to deal with several different subcontractors and coordinate their efforts. It's a stressful job, and you need the cooperation of the various people, dot and it's hard to get people to work with you if you're screaming swear words at them, something GC never figured out. This might be a good time to give you a visual of the restaurant layout. This is by no means to scale, just a sketch to give you an idea of what's going on. There are three ADOs to be installed, two on the entrance and one on the handicapped washroom. The conventional washrooms are down a set of stairs on the right, and by law, there has to be a washroom available for people using wheelchairs, marked as HC on the drawing. This is on a bit of a corridor of sorts used by the servers to bring food and dishes out. The partitions separating the corridor are about shoulder high, separating the corridor from the seating area, which is what the circles with four chairs represent. These are tables, booths, etc. with a smattering of service stands for order entry, and bits and pieces like extra cutlery. The decor was fancy, and meant to resemble a Victorian gentleman's club, with oak throughout, and thick carpets on the floors. Worthy of mention is the feature wall at the front, with alcoves for displaying sculptures, and places to hang paintings. So GC calls us, and they are ready for the ADOs. We arrive, and install. By the terms of the bid, it's BGGA's responsibility to supply dedicated 120V electricity for the ADOs and to run the 12V wires from the activation plates to the top of the doorway so they can be connected to the circuit board for the ADO. This wasn't present at the time of the install, so he ran an extension cord to power the ADO, and used a wireless transmitter and receiver to trigger it. All of this was specified in the bid, which said that we could install, and then return to hook up the wires once they get run. Bob came and supervised the tech installing the ADOs personally. When GC signed off, buried in the description was a line or two referencing the relevant sections of the bid. 
When GC signed off on the handicap washroom install there was a line noting that BGGA assumes all responsibility for compliance with the relevant building code section. GC didn't bother to read what he was signing, just scribbled a signature and took his copy. Bob made certain the tech was right beside him when GC signed off. Malicious compliance number one it's about two weeks before opening, and they are in the finishing stages. Bob gets a frantic call from GC that none of the ADOs are working, and they need these to be functional, or they won't get their occupancy permit. Bob heads down the next day with the tech. Bob, well, I found the problem. GC, so fix the FC King problem. Bob, there's number 120 V run to the doors, and there's number 12 V wires to hook up the buttons. GC, you didn't run the power. Why didn't you run the power? Bob, it's not in the scope of work in the bid. You're supposed to do it. GC, why didn't you tell me that when you were here the first time? Bob, I did, and you signed off on it. GC, where's the FC King electrician? Electrician, get your over here. Electrician, what's up? GC, why isn't there any power for these door operators? Electrician, it's not part of my scope of work. Bob, there's some good news. GC, what? Bob, if we use wireless for the buttons, we won't need 12V wires. I'll have to bill you for it as an add-on, but once you get me 120V, these ADOs will be working. Now GC realizes how FCKED he is. The interior of the restaurant is 90% complete, and there is no power to a critical part of the building. Without it, no permit. BGGA has FCKED up big time, assuming that either Bob or the electrician would run the wires, and not putting it into the scope of either bid. The electrical panel is in the back of the kitchen, and there's no way to bring 120V to the front entrance, except across the ceiling, which would be nearly impossible. All of the lighting and the ornate false ceiling was already in. Even if he was able to magically do that, he would either have to run a metal conduit down the surface of the feature wall, or rip out a good chunk of it, run the wires, and reinstall it. The handicap washroom ado wasn't as much of a problem, since it was closer and the wires could be run through the full ceiling. The section that contained the handicap washroom also had offices and storage with a T-bar ceiling, unlike the main room, that had 20-foot ceilings. The electrician charged GC big dollars for the extra work. Malicious compliance number two remember the handicap washroom. When the building inspector came to do a pre-check, they discovered that the square footage of the washroom, minus the area taken up by the in-swinging door, was less than the required minimum. They needed a quick fix, as dismantling the washroom, moving a wall, and relocating the plumbing fixtures would be too expensive, and would take too long. So GC decided to reverse the swing of the door, and have it swing into the corridor, rather than into the washroom. This had a really bad effect on the operation of Fancy A once it opened, as any time someone wanted to use the washroom, the door blocked the flow of servers in and out of the kitchen. And people are lazy, even able-bodied people were prone to using this washroom as it was closest. I don't know what the conversations between Fancy A and BGGA were like, but I imagine they were pretty intense. Dot but who gives a FCK? GC signed off on that, too. And Bob got to invoice for a whole new ado, as the original was a pull style, and reversing the swing meant that a push style was required. Pro Revenge GC called a few days after discovering that the entrance doors needed 120V, to tell Bob that the 120V was available. Bob heads down with the tech to check it out. In the vestibule was a heater known as an air curtain. It's a big heater, designed to push a high volume of warmed air into the vestibule, to mitigate cold outside air entering the restaurant. It pulls a significant amount of electricity every time it kicks on, and GC had tied the 120V for the entrance door ADOs into the same circuit. Bob explains that the bid specified that the ADOs require their own dedicated circuits, one for each. GC responds that he doesn't give a shit, hook the goddamn things up, so Berry does, and has GC sign off again. Only this time buried in the sign-off sheet is an acknowledgement that by not providing dedicated circuits, all warranties are void, and subsequent service would be billable. Just like usual, GC scribbles his signature and takes his copy without reading it. These ADOs are finicky about power. There's a motor, obviously, controlled by a circuit board that determines how fast the door opens, how long it stays open, how fast it closes, how much force is used, that sort of thing. If it takes a spike in power it fails, and the ADU no longer functions. A power spike blows a fuse and damages one of the components of the control board. This is replaceable, and the part is worth about 30 bucks. 
The control board can be fixed in about half an hour, with another half hour on a scope to make certain everything is good. Bob had sent one of the techs to the manufacturer to be certified in rebuilding the board, even though our standard was to just ship them back to the manufacturer and get a replacement. Sure enough, a couple of days later GC calls in a panic. They have the final occupancy inspection scheduled for the next day, and one of the ADOs at the entrance is down. GC, your FC King Adu isn't working. Get down here and fix it. Bob, okay, but this isn't covered under warranty. It's billable. GC, what the FCK are you talking about? It's not even been a week and it's broken. It's warranty. Bob, no, warranties were voided when you didn't provide clean power. GC, FCK that. Get down here and put in a new ado. Bob, it doesn't need a new ado. It needs a new control board. And I can get a new control board from the manufacturer in four to six weeks. GC loses his mind. There's no way he can delay the opening of Fancy A for six weeks waiting for a part. He calls Bob every name in the book, threatens legal action, etc. Bob responds, look GC, I have a control board on the shelf that was rebuilt by a factory certified technician. I can let you have it at 80% of the list price of a new one, and I can have it installed by noon tomorrow. Do you want the rebuilt, or the new part, and do you agree that this is billable as per the terms of the bid? GC, yes. Just get the FC King thing fixed by tomorrow. Now Bob knows that GC and BGGA were going to FCK him just like they did years ago. That ended up being a I never said that dispute. What GC didn't know was every time he called Bob, the call was recorded. You know the this call may be recorded for quality assurance purposes that you get when you dial in. Well Bob never used his cell phone, never initiated a call, and every time the GC called in it was recorded and archived. Every. Single. Time. Sure enough, another couple of days go by, and an ado goes down again. Bob asks if GC is good with the rebuild, gets confirmation, removes the blown part, installs the rebuild, then takes the blown control board back to the shop and rebuilds it. A new control board is $750. The rebuild he's charging $600, for a part that maybe cost $75 to get back into shape. The bid specified that non-warranty service was $125 per hour minimum 4 hours, so tack on another $500 for labor, and it takes maybe 45 minutes to install a new control board and dial it in. So every control board replacement was generating $1,100. There were 27 blown control board swaps in the first two months. GC called in every one of them, and Bob got his verbal approval. If someone from Fancy A called in, we gave them GC's number, and said that we could only come and fix it if GC was the one to call it in. Then Bob gets a call from Daddy of BGGA wanting to know what this invoice for almost 30 grand is for. Bob explains, and a meeting is called, Bob brings his lawyer, and all copies of the sign-off sheets, as well as transcripts of every conversation he had with GC. It becomes very apparent that GC FCKED up large, and that Bob had every I dotted and every T crossed. BGGA is glaring daggers at GC, and basically tells Bob that if he wants to get paid, he's going to have to sue for the money. Bob smiles, and slides his ace across the table. It's a contractor's lien against BGGA, fancy a restaurant, and massive realty company, the owners of the building. Here's the thing. Fancy A was owned by internationally famous chef IFC, who makes his living getting very important people to invest in opening a new restaurant. This is a place where they go to be very important, and bring their business contacts with them. After a short time, when the restaurant is the happening place in town, the investors sell the place, and cash out large. IFC sticks around, helps with the transition, and makes a percentage of the restaurant's profits for the use of his name. He's built an income stream with the investors' money, and the investors make a nice return. Only now they can't sell, with a lien on the place. And these investors have rabid FC King Pitbulls as lawyers. Hell, some of them are lawyers. See you in court, BGGA. Only you're not facing Bob's lawyer, you're facing a whole new level of legal expertise. Have fun with that. Bob got his revenge, and then withdrew service based on the disputed invoice. He's the only company allowed to service and install this brand of Adu as he has a protected territory from the manufacturer, and does seven figures worth of business with them a year. The only other companies anywhere nearby were warned off by the manufacturer, who relayed the fact that BGGA had called them directly looking for service, and they referred BGGA to Bob. 
Bob will definitely get paid, as it's a standard to hold back 10% of the payment to a construction company for a year, and the holdback will definitely cover the invoice. So Fancy A will pay Bob and then take it out of BGGA's holdback. Either that, or they will sue BGGA into dust, and force BGGA to cough up and settle the lien. Who knows what company BGGA picked up to cover the ADOs. Bob has friends in the industry and warned them all off, but there are a whole competitors, and Bob didn't say a thing to them. Maybe BGGA is screwing over one of the competition, and what hurts his competition, helps Bob. What makes this deliciously pro? You think maybe, just maybe, Bob, who has decades of experience in the industry, might have had an electrician friend that could show him the electrical bid. And that maybe Bob knew from the beginning that there was no provision for 120V in either package. Or that the washroom was too small. Or that GC, a corner cutter, would take the easy way out and hook the ADOs into the air curtain. Way to go, Bob. Nicely played. TLDR a subcontractor complies with a bid, to the letter, and covers his or in all correspondence, general contractor ends up paying big dollars for their error, allowing subcontractor to recover money he was screwed out of years ago. Also have a look into my playlist for more entertaining stories. What do you think about this Reddit story? Thank you and have a nice day.